Hello and welcome to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege. Today is Tuesday, September 17th. Week 2 of the NFL is officially behind us now after last night's game in which the Falcons stole a win in Philadelphia 22-21. to We're going to go over that game and all the crazy hypotheticals and decision-making that went towards the end of that game. Then also... Big news from yesterday, Bryce Young officially getting benched by the Carolina Panthers. We'll talk about that, plus a lot more to go over as well from week two later on in the show, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But before we do start, I'd like to remind you guys before we get started, if you got any questions during the show, we want to hear about it. Your input is a big part of what makes this show great, and we thrive on your energy and insights. So whether it's a quick comment, a thoughtful question, or an opinion you just have to share, don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. Now, if you want to make it absolutely sure that your message stands out and gets featured on the show, there's an easy way to go about that by using the new Super Chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send in your Super Chat. This way, it guarantees that your message gets on the air, and it's also a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love, and we appreciate every bit of it. So go ahead, let us know what you're thinking, hit the Super Chat button, and let's keep this show as interactive and as exciting as possible. And there's also still the alternative tip and donations link if you want to use that. GSMCpodcast.net is the link you could use to comment and uh, comment and leave a question on anything we say on today's show. We couldn't do what we do without your amazing support on this channel and we're always so thankful to you guys whenever you guys get the chance to support us with that new super chat button at the bottom of the chat box but now we can finally get into this madness from last night's game right the falcons and the eagles the last game of week two the falcons escaped with a 22 to 21 victory in philadelphia both teams now stand at one and one after the first two weeks Another close game in this week, all throughout, you know, Sunday and even going back, uh, not Thursday, Thursday was a blowout, but Sunday really it was all filled with these close, close games and a lot of good ones as well. Another close game decided by a field goal or less, another home team losing as well this week, a lot of upsets in that regard. And to just go through a bit of the context through this game, it was 7-6 to six at halftime. The first half wasn't really filled with too much, I think, explosive plays. I think both teams were still trying to figure each other out. There was a lot of running, you know, good running from Bijan Robinson. I was very impressed by that. And also from the Eagles part as well, Saquon and their offense looking pretty dominant, but still only 7-6 at halftime. And the game really didn't take that much of an exciting turn until the end of the third quarter when Darnell Mooney scores the first touchdown of the game to make it 15-10 in favor of the Falcons and then that sort of got the Eagles started a little bit and ultimately when we headed into the fourth quarter Jalen Hurts scores on a tush push after Saquon Barkley was ruled down at the half yard line they hit the two-point conversion as well making it 18 to 5 or 18 to 15 yeah at that point and then it comes Then it follows that up with a bunch of just craziness that happened after that. The biggest one was with with a minute 46 left, and the Eagles were driving towards the Falcon side of the field right to score a touchdown. That drive followed up a big fourth down stop by C.J. Gardner-Johnson. If you guys remember a fourth down that the Falcons were trying to convert on, C.J. Gardner-Johnson just burst through the middle and stops B. John Robinson dead in his tracks there to stop that fourth down from being converted. At that point, you kind of got the feeling that the Falcons sort of gave the game away there by not converting on that, by leaving CJ unblocked to to make the tackle. But it, there was a lot more to happen after that, obviously, right? Like I mentioned before, the Eagles now, after that turnover on downs, were driving down the field with a minute 46 left. Philadelphia faced a third down. I forget how far it was, but it was like a third and four, third and three, actually. And third down, little time left. You're only up a field goal. The Philadelphia Eagles decide to throw the ball to Saquon Barkley. If you guys saw it or saw the clip on social media, it was a rollout to Jalen Hurts' right side, a play-action rollout. You know, Saquon Barkley there in the flat, 
pretty open, as open as I think that play can get. Jalen Hurts throws the ball in a very good spot. There's nothing wrong with that, but just Saquon just drops it. You know, he everything's on on the mark, everything's perfect, but Saquon just, just drops it, as simple as that. And then you're faced with a decision, right? Because you dropped the ball, because you dropped the pass, the time stops, so that's not in your favor. It's already fourth and four, so Nick Sirianni, Kellen Moore decide to just kick the field goal, make it 21-15 at that point, and give the ball back to the Atlanta Falcons, right? And Atlanta and the Atlanta Falcons, you know, take the ball with about a minute 30 left, I want to say, if I remember correctly, and through the culmination of that game, two-minute drive, Kirk right down the field. I think he hit on every pass that he threw in that drive, all leading up to the last throw to Drake London, beats Darius Slay on a fake inside move, all the way back to the front pylon, and Kirk puts it on the money, and the Atlanta Falcons win with about, like, 20 seconds or something left in the game. They had one more chance, the Eagles did, but Jalen Hurts ended up throwing an interception to Jesse Bates, which really closed the entire deal. So now, we look at this and try to dissect everything, right? Because it all happened with a minute 46 left, right? Of course, it wasn't decided, with that decision and with those last two minutes, right? Because we're talking about an entire football game. So to say that this one play decided it, you could really go back throughout this entire game, different decisions that could have worked in the Eagles' favor, the Falcons' favor, if they decided to, you know, rectify some things. But this was the main part of the game that everybody focuses on, right? Because you look at this play, you look at Saquon talking about it, and how he drops the ball, right? Some people might even say that the Eagles shouldn't have even called that, right? Everyone's saying, or most people I think would say, that the Eagles should have just ran it once, kill some time with it, depending on if they got the first down or not, get a couple yards, make it fourth and short, and then possibly run it again, you know, use the tush push again, or, you know, make another play up. But using that method, you know, you kill time, you are you get two plays instead of one now, obviously, in hindsight, and you could really put the game away more likely than not if you decide to run it instead of throw it, right? But to me, I had no issue with that play calling to Saquon. He knows he should have caught that. It was a relatively easy throw to him. I have no problem with it. He catches that ball nine times out of ten most often, and this one time he just happened to drop it. And again, He is, outside of A.J. Brown, who didn't play, he's probably your most talented player. So a lot of the times in these situations, you want the ball in that best player's hands, and he just dropped it, right? You could just say he should have, they should have handed it off to him, right? He'd still get the ball either way, but this is all hindsight, right? Everyone freaks out about it now because it didn't work. If it did work, or if it was fourth and one, it wouldn't really matter, and I don't think that many people would make a big deal about it, right? They would just say the Eagles won the game, questionable call, but it worked, so we're not going to talk about it that much. Now that it didn't work, everybody wants to get on the Eagles, the play calling, Nick Sirianni, and I really don't defend Nick Sirianni or Kellen Moore that often, um, but I didn't think this was a problem at all with how the game ended up. The real problem to me was the fact that the Eagles defense and the lack of pass rush is really starting to concern me more than I thought it would after last week's game against the Packers because I know Kirk and the Falcons had a good amount of time with um, with what the Eagles left them right when they kicked that field goal, but there was absolutely no pressure on Kirk. There was no jamming or you know getting in the receiver's face to make the catches uncomfortable. Every time a receiver caught the ball, they had about three yards at least of space to work with, run out of bounds, and everything was so... It was just like a practice. It's like they were running a practice and they were going up against the scout team defense where no one's allowed to touch the quarterback or anything like that. It was so easy that you wouldn't have thought that they were playing in Philly, a hostile environment, the team getting into it. Kirk managed that drive as perfectly as you would have liked. Again, practice-like because everything was so just comfortable for Kirk. He had a bunch of time to look, go through his progressions and make the throw. Through two games now, the Eagles have three sacks in two games, zero from Jalen Carter, from Jordan Davis, from Josh Sweat, or Bryce Huff. 
their starting front line basically has ha recorded no sacks. The only people that have recorded sacks are Zach Bond, their middle linebacker, and one defensive lineman in the game last night against the Falcons. Their starters have no sacks, and I think that's a real problem. More so than the play not working, I don't really mind that at all. Again, if it works, no one's really talking about it now, and I don't want to hear anything about, um, you know, having it work or have people saying that they should have just ran it because Saquon is the guy you bought him, you paid him, or you paid him a lot of money, bought him off the market to try and get this, you know, whole situation settled at the running back position. So to go with that, to go with this now, Saquon, and, you know, turning on him a little bit or the play calling as well, I don't really buy that. I like the play call overall. And, you know, Atlanta, I thought they played a way better game than they did week one against the Steelers a lot more play calling a lot more schemes and motions work under center you know keeping this Philadelphia Eagles defense on their toes you know not really being affected by the pass rush is another thing but I really like what the Falcons did Drake London got more involved Bijan looked a little bit more comfortable from week one and Kirk is slowly getting there you know there was those reports recently that said that he wasn't a hundred percent thus far he, I think he told it I think he told Troy Aikman that leading up to that Monday night football game, but I like the way that they are slowly developing. And this was a big win because next week they have the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Chiefs might look different now, right, with Pacheco, no Hollywood Brown in their lineup, so it could benefit the Falcons a lot more, and they could end up winning that game. I wouldn't be surprised, but if they went 0-2 and then hosted, or yeah, they hosted the Chiefs after that, it could have been a very rough start for them, so this was a big win for them. Not only on the results, but how they looked playing. And the Eagles, you know, a bad loss. I wouldn't blame anything on Jalen. Uh, I know he threw the interception at the end. And the offense was relatively monotone. But I thought he played better. I thought his decision making was better. Um, and just really commanding everything. I felt that it was a lot cleaner. But obviously missing A.J. Brown was huge. That helped out a lot for the Falcons. And this could have been easily avoided. Uh, one stat I wanted to throw out there to you guys. Because I thought it was pretty pretty remarkable was that since the start of last year in 2023 the Eagles defense has four losses or the whole team has four losses with a lead in the final two minutes and they've allowed 140 points in the final two minutes over that span of time to give you a bit of context the Kansas City Chiefs in that same time span another good contending team they've allowed 28 points in the final two minutes of all these games and compared to the Eagles that's a major problem now you don't want this to become a habit A habit going forward. It sort of is trending that way. And, you know, that all has to do with the play calling there towards the end. Um, and that has to be fixed up, right? Or that has to be fixed up or the defense, in my opinion, has to play better. And I'm not sure where they get that pass rush from now. I mean, Jalen Carter is probably their best, most talented player. But getting rid of Hassan Reddick on back in April, probably isn't turning out the way that they would have liked right now. Still no sign of Nolan Smith either. They've really hyped him up in the offseason, but up until now, I really haven't seen him, so that's another thing that I'm still looking out for. But yeah, I think a very sour taste for the Eagles and a very relieving feeling, I think, for the Falcons, where in the final two minutes, you probably were feeling a little bit nervous that you might lose, but Kirk, the Falcons, get a good drive going, and they end up winning the game. So the Falcons go to 1-1. One and one. And sticking in the NFC East now, we'll wrap up this segment, but we'll go on to talk about Bryce Young. Yesterday, before the game started, ESPN reported that Bryce Young was officially being benched by the Carolina Panthers. My thoughts on it, what went into this decision, and you know, just talking about this whole situation and how bad it's looked on the Carolina Panthers since they drafted Bryce Young. My thoughts and more information on that is coming up right after this break. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 